All right, well, welcome. My name is Damian Graham, and I'm the Communications Director for the City of Raleigh. And next to me, of course, is Mayor Nancy McFarland of our great city here in Raleigh. And this is the first of hopefully a couple episodes of a new series we're calling, very creatively, A Few <laughs> Minutes with the Mayor, uh, where we get to hear from you, uh, the Mayor, about her thoughts about what's going on with the city and, uh, and with the City Council. So uh, today's episode, we're coming from HQ Raleigh and it was important to be here to kick off the series. Why do we pick HQ Raleigh? You know, I think HQ is really indicative of who we're becoming as a city. And we know that entrepreneurship is so important and we see it across the country. Cities are really tapping into this. And you know, we're very lucky that we have amazing colleges and universities that are just turning out this incredible talent. And this is the, the kind of place that that talent wants to be. You have access to um, services and you know other creative talents and thoughts that can help you along the way. And uh, it's just, uh, it's a great asset for the city. It really is, it's an impressive facility. So I'm glad we're here. Yeah. So let's jump right into it. Put on, okay. uh, pull out your crystal ball. <laughs> what do you see as some of the biggest challenges facing the council and the city in the next couple of years? Well, I think our biggest, you know, challenge is, is growth. It's um, one of those things. We are an incredibly successful city. People love it here, and then the word gets out. And so we have lots and lots of people moving here, which is a good thing. You know, businesses come, opportunities come. It's a good thing to be a growing, thriving city. But it also brings a lot of challenges for us. Of course, I think the first one everybody thinks of is traffic congestion. Um, it's interesting, you know, a lot of times within the city, you don't feel it as much, but boy, if you've been on 40 or Route 1 and that's your commute, you really feel the pain. And we are in a great spot to make those plans and those changes to keep us from being those areas that everybody's moving here to get away from. You know, we don't want to be choke off our own success. Right. So the obviously the transportation referendum coming up is going to be huge for us. But you know that also extends in to a lot of other things. Obviously there's other resources, water and um, you know roads and, and all of those things we have to have to pay for. But it's also, you know, we see a change in demographics. You know, we have a lot more younger people living here. We have a lot of people from not only other places in the United States but around the world coming here. So I think for the council it's really important to keep up with their constituent base as those changes occur because uh, the needs and wants of people are going to change along with it. So you hinted at it a little bit. So what would you say are your top priorities? Uh, for well, for sure, the the transit referendum is huge. Um, you know, we're also making changes within the city. Uh, we did a strategic plan a couple years ago and set uh, priorities for our strategic plan. And so this year I've changed our regular council committees as we've always known them, public works and um, public safety to align with those strategic goals. And the city staff has cross departmental teams that are already working on those goals. So it really is a new way for the city to function. And it's, um, you know, it's the council, it's the city really working all together as, a, as opposed to a more siloed approach. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to see really great outcomes from that. Well, so one of the great accomplishments of, of last year and previous years is, of course, uh, Dorothea Dix Park. What are some of the next steps there? Well, you know, right now we're really, um, there's a lot of buildings on that property. Mm -hmm. I think it's almost two million square feet. It's a lot of, and so those buildings are, some are occupied, some are empty. They're all in various states of condition. And so we are spending a lot of time really assessing what we have. We know we have some contaminated dirt that has to be removed, so we're working on getting that done. Um, but as we get ready to start the planning process, which will take a few years, right. um, it's really important for us to know of all those buildings, what can we keep? You know, what can be rehabbed? What's the cost? You know, I'm sure they've got asbestos and lead paint. I mean, they're old buildings. Um, and which ones have to come down? And that will be, you know, very integral to how that planning process goes. Okay. Well, and so we've got lots of parks, fortunately, here in, uh, in our great city. So uh, one of the more significant ones is the redesign of Moore Square. Mm -hmm. What do you see that, how does it impact the city of Raleigh and specifically downtown? You know, I'm very excited about the redesign of, of Moore Square. Um, 
I went to New York City to look at Bryant Park because I had heard so many comparisons between Moore Square and Bryant Park. And of course, our planning director is now the oh, that's right. yeah. Commissioner of Parks that's in New right. York City, so yeah. that helps. Um, but I think it's really, in, the new design really wants to draw people in. It wants, as you're going by that park, it, it pulls you in to be interactive. I mean, it's gonna have tables and chairs and little areas set out, but it's gonna also be very adaptable to having big shows. I mean, it's it's got, a perfect place to if you want to construct a large stage and all of this is being worked into it so it's going to be um, really uh, interesting and I think it will see everything from yoga classes to all kinds of you know small things programmed here and there but also a lot of ability to just sit and enjoy it and maybe eat lunch in it or it's just going to be more usable. Well I, I think a lot of folks can't wait for that. Oh yeah. I'm very excited about it. So last question, uh, recently we had the swearing in ceremony mm -hmm. uh, right before the holidays and in your speech, you said that arts are an integral part of how we define ourselves. Mm -hmm. Speak more to that. You know, it, it is interesting when you think of arts and culture, there are some cultures that you just automatically, if you think about art in Southwest United States, right. you know, that has a, a theme to it and you, you recognize it and I think the people that live there very much identify with it. Sometimes it's architecture. It might be, you know, the Space Needle in Seattle or, or whatever. Sometimes it's architecture as art that people identify with and it, it sort of gives that, um, that place an identifiable arts thing. I think here, you know, it's, it's very personal. You know, people, we have so many people engaged in the arts. We have so many good musicians here. We have a great contemporary artists here and a lot of people don't know about it. Um, you know, it, we have a performing arts center that we're the capital. You know, we are home to the North Carolina Symphony and the North Carolina Ballet and the North Carolina Opera and the North Carolina Theater and Choral. I mean, there are so many things that go on in that building that I think we need to do a better job of embracing that. It's not just the uh, sort of the standards like those, but it's the organic growth of arts that we're seeing. And I think we are in a great place with that uh, blending of technology and art. Because mm -hmm. if you've you know been over to Visual Art Exchange or Design Box and you see some of the things they're doing with 3D printers, and you know we're just is so tech savvy here and to see that incorporated with the strong base of arts I think we're really going to see that more and more we need to really nurture that and and develop that because you know that's how people express themselves and that's how as a community you start to come together and really give yourself definition. Well look, clearly there's a lot to look forward to <laughs> in the next couple of years and we appreciate you taking time this afternoon to be with us. Sure, happy uh, to. So uh, look out for us in future episodes on our YouTube channel and also on our RTN and uh, we will see you then. Thanks Great. so much. Thank you.